Look at Rob letting out that gas. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a real quick spin in the shop just to kind of show off what we've got. Before we launch into this video, we're talking about holiday gifts and what you can buy. Anybody that owns a shop or works out of the garage like I do. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since we put out a video. We've been in the process of moving. We're about two and a half months, I guess, in this new place. Shop's definitely smaller than it was. We'll give you a little recap right here. We'll just put it what it is right now before I make any more changes. So let's talk about Christmas gifts, Christmas holiday ideas for your significant other, your friend, your family, your grandfather, whoever. So some recommendations I make. One, the stool I'm sitting on. It costs about 20 bucks. Full rotation, storage underneath. So all my golf cart uh, parts are underneath, which is great because I haven't had a chance to put the motor back in yet. These mechanics trays with magnets on the back, I've got several of them. They kind of float around and it's great because you can see the garage door. Keep all your bolts in one place. And then we move on to some of the more expensive items. If you're a fanboy, like most of us are, we try to buy one tool set. So whether it's DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Makita, it doesn't matter. Uh, those are definitely the better three in my opinion. But Bridget has gotten me by plenty of years. So whatever you want to do, DeWalt probably has the most woodworking tools that are specific. So if you're going woodworking like me, you might want to go that route. But this is from the days when I was doing automation work and security work, electrical work. So. I kept what I had and just kind of added to it over the years. Anyway, you can't go wrong with buying so many new batteries. We always burn these out. We always need new ones. But they are expensive if you're buying the larger ones. Like I've got on my drills over here. Those will run for two of them at five amp hours, about 200 bucks. Maybe 300, it depends. Uh, you can also buy new chargers. So anytime you buy a kit, it will come with like a Sawzall, a drill or two. You can buy different size kits. And then you get these little single chargers but they make ones that can do up to like six batteries at a time 12 batteries at a time or portable so definitely buy these or buy the bigger ones the your significant other they're working this stuff all the time we'll be very thankful to have one to charge their battery at work even if it's uh taken with them from home so as you know i'm a woodworker we're getting into it definitely can't go wrong find somebody a nice circular saw we'll talk about consumables later Orbital sander, I keep a plugged in one because the battery doesn't last long enough. Uh, when it comes to routers, I like having this little small Milwaukee router. That's how I cut out this window. Uh, it's just really handy to have something that you can cut around and it's got a really large visibility window. But I've got a plunge router in a box down there. I've got two router tables, so it definitely makes a lot of sense to have a variety. These probably around, I think, 60 to 80 bucks, but it doesn't come with a battery. Other tools for woodworking, I definitely recommend a digital gauge. This one, I ordered off Amazon. It was about $10 or $20. It's got a magnet so that if I want to measure, I can put it on the side of that blade. I can put it on the side of my table saw blade after hitting the zero button. So I'll just set it on my level, hit the zero button, make sure it's going to level out wherever I need it to, whether I want it on the side or straight down. And then I can get my blade at the perfect angle because you know they're never perfect based on the gauge that they come with. Working for the wife who's doing the recording right now. She's had me hanging all kinds of stuff up on the wall. So I bought one of these little cheap laser levels. Uh, I just wanted to test it out, never used one. I always do it the hard way. I recommend buying it. 20 bucks, 30 bucks to make life easy. It's got a vacuum on the back. So as long as you have smooth, modern uh, drywall, it'll stick to it wherever you put it, turn it on. And it's just a little vacuum on the back. It does not damage the paint. I've used it plenty of times. Another $10 to $20 purchase I made is this temperature humidity probe. So if you look at some of my equipment, like this miter saw blade, you can just see it's covered in rust. Didn't have this in my last shop. It's got a magnet on the back. So what I do here is I leave it attached to the garage door. I've got a dehumidifier over in the corner and this keeps it about 60%. And this is in the Southeast and it's raining right now and it's 60% humidity in here. Two days ago, before I bought the dehumidifier, it was staying around 80 to 100% all the time. So all my tools, my brand new saw stop table is starting to get a little rust on it. Try to avoid that. And the final tool I would recommend for 20 bucks, digital caliber. 
I haven't used it yet, but when I start doing very fine woodworking, uh, it's going to come in handy. So if you've got a woodworker that is doing it, you know, we're all using tape measures and squares. So you can always buy tape measures and squares. You never have enough of them. You get messed up all the time. But this will help you when they try to do some really nice woodworking and they want it to be as precise as possible. So now that we talked about all the Milwaukee fanboy stuff and some of the hand tools and power tools that are cordless wireless tools, let's talk about other consumables or semi-consumables. Uh, the wife's parents bought me a bunch of these drill indexes. I also had, I don't know, 10 or 20 myself over the years. They get kind of cut down as I break bits and then replace them. So if you know of popular bits that your uh, woodworker, shop worker, whoever is missing, you can always open the drill index and kind of guess what they're missing and just replace that individual one. The issue is these cost anywhere from $15 to $30, $40, $50. Bucks. For that price, you can buy an entire index. So just be aware of that. But some of these bits are better. They end the kits. If you are buying Christmas gifts, I would stay away from the Ryobi and the cheaper kits. They're you wish pay for. They did a test between the Walt Milwaukee and some of these cheaper kits. You're getting 10 to 50 times more use out of these, and they're only 10 to $20 more. So that's the better deal to go with. If you are gonna buy indexes, I definitely recommend sticking with drill indexes more than the tips, or buy one that's a combo like this, because we don't break these that often. But these we break all the time, and we wear them out, we don't like to resharpen them. Some people do, I don't have the time. Uh, another thing, and my wife got a lot of use out of it, you can buy these brush kits. So I took the wire brush, because I get more use out of it in the shop. She uses the other softer bristle brushes with one of my other impact drills. Inside the house to clean the tile, clean the floors, anything that needs hard scrubbing, so you don't have to sit there with a the sponge and scrub it, you can just use that drill and it does most of the work for you. So spray it, let it sit, and use the softer brushes and scrub it up. And you can get that in the cleaning aisle uh, or in the tool aisle, usually. And they're about 30, 40 bucks, not that expensive. Save you tons of work, wife will be happy with you. Useful tools, you know, you got unique bits and stuff. This is probably about $60 to do a right angle screw. Bulldozer kit, something that probably isn't needed very often unless you're an actual trade or blue collar worker like me. Uh, I used to use them all the time since I got out of it. It's convenient to have, definitely not necessary. I just use paddle bits more than anything now. Forstner bits, I got two cases of these. Having moved, I'm not sure where the other case is. I think it's over my rolling toolbox. Really good with the drill press. I don't have it set up yet. So if they have a drill press, you might want to look at getting them a nice set of uh, Forstner bits. It's very good for fine woodworking. Uh, Ryobi, it's what they sold at the big box store. That's why I've got it. it. works well enough as it is, but I've already burned through two of these bits just going through wood. The wife is standing on the CNC machine, but I go through a lot of bits. I've been testing different brands. I've got a Mana. I've got Fitz bits. I've got this cheap case that I, I think this is the Boss brand that I got at Lowe's. I like the case. I like the fact that you uh, can store all your bits. It keeps it from getting rusty. Definitely breaks really easy. I've broken three or four of them already. So if you need to buy more consumables, definitely you can buy router bits if they have a CNC machine. If they need all kinds. You can walk out to the shop. Typically, they're labeled in the bottom. This is another Ryobi kit. I've already busted a couple of these. The bearings break off of these really easy. I mean, it's so bad that they come with extra bearings in them. So definitely stay away from this. Just go ahead and buy this kit. Or better yet, order it offline if you have time. And that's it for all the drill indexes. It's just a good, cheap gift, 20 to 50 bucks, and you can definitely uh, hook somebody up with what they need. All right, so another quick, cheap, and easy gift, something I would start with if you have absolutely nothing else to go with and you're not sure. I go through a bunch of monsters, which I try to branch off from and drink death in the water, but every now and then I need that extra spurt of good use. Uh, or you can choose one of your other variety of poisons, you know, whatever your woodworker chooses to use, and a good coolie. You can never go wrong with a good one of these. This has lasted me a couple of years. It's got a little beat up. Uh, we take it everywhere. It's been in the river, on the boat, it's been out in the woods. I take it on the back of the golf cart, ball games, weddings, you name it. All right, so something I always need more of are consumables. So this is typically what I'd use in a project or use on a variety of projects. Sandpaper, this ranges anywhere from $10 to $100, depending on how many you get. This is, I've got 40, 80, 150, 220, 320. Look at what your 
uh, shop owner does and kind of base it off of that of what they need. If you look in there and you see they're almost out of 80, you can go buy several packs of that and they'd be very happy with it. It saves them a trip to the store, buys them what they need, and then they can keep running through the project. If they have a CNC machine like this, it's always handy to have a lot of double-sided duct tape. If you don't want to deal with the clamp or if you're kind of running over the edges like I do on some of the stuff I make, you can take this double-sided duct tape, slap it on the bottom of the wood, stick it to the table, and you don't have to worry about messing up the clamp. Painter's tape, always have tons of rolls of that. Helps to, I mean, I use it for everything from marking up projects, writing my notes on it so I can stick to the wall and not lose it later. Batteries, running out of those all the time. So 9-volt, AA, AAA, the most popular that you need. Nitrile gloves, it says one size fits all. Try to buy at least a large, if not extra large, whatever you can find. The one size fits all really hard to get your hand into. Spray paint. I use a lot of spray paint whenever I'm working on projects. I like the Rust-Oleum better than the Krylon, but they both work really well. It's just a matter of what big box store you've got nearby. Lately, I've been using, since we moved, a bunch of these LED ceiling lights. They're IR detected. They run off of C batteries. I don't have power ran out to the barn. So I've got about five of these installed out there. I've got one installed in the well house. You walk in, automatically turns on. So it's a great little $20 gift you could give somebody if you're on a piece of property and you need light out in remote areas. No judgment on the craftsmanship, but I was kind of playing around. Zip ties, another consumable we use a lot. Pencils, I recommend both the carpenter pencils, right? These are flat. I think they're exactly one inch wide. Uh, a lot of them, so you can use them as spacers, you can use them between deck boards. And they're a little bit thicker and sturdier. You just got to sharpen it with a knife, so it can be a little bit difficult at times. If you buy mechanical pencils, buy them a big kit of them so they can lay them everywhere around the shop. Buy them with the thickest lead that you can get. And then buy a couple of refills from lead, and they'll be happy with that. Because you can do very fine marking with this. Wood glue. This will go anywhere from 10 bucks up to $50, depending on if you're buying a gallon of Type Bond 3, which is the best you can buy. Tap on two, blue bottle, and you've got a red bottle that's a tap on one. I would stick with the blue or the green. You can buy chalk. <clears throat> I use a bunch of chalk lines doing markups on large pieces of wood. Electrical tape, Velcro. A lot of uses for that from electrical cords, cargo straps. I use it all the time. You can buy a box cutter and box cutter blades. Very useful for all kinds of projects. This is what I carry in my pocket all the time. I like being able to swap to a clean blade. As soon as that one starts to wear out, a lot of places won't let you carry a knife anymore, but you can get away with carrying a box cutter. Safety glasses, safety is always paramount. I go through about one to two pairs of these a year, even though I try to be very careful with them. Somehow I manage to scratch them and damage them constantly. If they use a respirator, if you don't want to buy one of these because this is going to be up to $60, the individual refills for the respirator itself are anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks a pop. So that'd be a good gift also, so they can swap that out once a year. Because like most men, you know, we're not dirty creatures, in my opinion, but uh, we don't really take good care of ourselves at all. Like, we'll keep using the same stuff forever until we start coughing and have a bad doctor's appointment. Glue kind of rolls into this. I bought this from Rock Rockler Online. I think I paid about 20 bucks, 30 bucks for this. Comes with a bunch of different glue up options and glue bottles. That way we don't keep using our fingers. I use this little brush all the time. It's kind of like a barbecue br uh, bristle brush. The glue doesn't really stick to it. That dry glue it just peels right off. And you're ready to go again. The final thing I'd like to talk about are clamps. If you want to spend a little bit of extra money. I don't recommend buying necessarily the DeWalt clamps or the other big box store clamps like the Irwin. They're great for what they are. But uh, I like to have one brand of everything. And I think Jorgensen makes a lot of the best woodworking clamps. I don't have them yet. I plan to replace all my walk clamps as they wear out with Jorgensen, just because they have a lot of better options than just using a single stock clamp. But you can buy these in kits. And if you look at the value of the price, they've gone up a lot like everything else with the inflation we're experiencing. You can go to the pipe clamps. Mine are real rusty because they've been outside. <laughs> You can buy those and then buy the black lead pipes, and that is the best deal you can get. And nobody's going to complain about having more pipe clamps. All right, so to go with the digital gauges that we talked about earlier with the temperature sensor and the humidity sensor, I have a dehumidifier here. I've drilled two holes in the wall, one for the pump out feed and one for the water out feed. That way I'm not relying on the bucket to fill up. It just goes straight out the wall and pours out. This thing has taken the shop humidity, because we're in the southeast, from 80 to 100% humidity down to 60. 
So anything below 60, it's a lot harder for iron and other metal tools to build up rust. And I've had a really bad humidity problem here in the Southeast. And that's it for this video. That's all I wanted to talk about were holiday gift ideas and anything you can do to provide.